Finding the volume of a cone using a formula, lesson 13.2b. So for a little comparison, the formula for the volume of a prism and the volume of a cylinder are the same. We multiply the height h by the base b, so volume is equal to base times height. Remember, there's two bases. We have base 1 and base 2. We can use either one for the base area. We've now found that the volume of a cone is one-third the volume of a cylinder with the same base and height. We did that in the previous video, 13.2a, with our rice experiment. If the volume of this cylinder is 15 feet cubed and they have the same height and base area, then the volume of this cone is 5 feet cubed. So for your notes, the volume V of a cone with radius R is one-third the area of the base B times the height H. Volume is equal to one-third base times height, or if we don't know the area of the base, we can use volume is equal to one-third pi R squared H using this to find the base area. Here it's telling us to find the volume of this cone, round the answer to the nearest tenth. We see that it has a height of 4 inches and a radius of 2 inches. We substitute the values into the formula, and using 3.14 for pi, we have an approximation symbol here now because we're not using all the digits of pi. We know the radius is 2, so that instead of r squared, we have 2 squared. The height is 4. We multiply 4 times 4 and get 16. We multiply 3.14 times 16 and get 50 and 24 hundredths. Now we can multiply this by a third or divide by 3. Same thing. We get 16 and 74 hundredths to round it to the nearest tenth. The 4 tells the 7 to stay the same. We have 16 and 7 tenths inches cubed. Again, we need to find the volume and round to the nearest tenth. We see the height is 10 and the radius is 3 centimeters. We put it into the formula. Here's our height 10 and our radius 3 centimeters. We square that and get a 9. Now we can do 9 times 10, which is 90. Multiply 90 times 3.14. We get 282 and 6 tenths. We don't need this trailing zero, do we? We have 282 and 6 tenths times 1 third, or we can just divide 282 and 6 tenths by 3. Same answer. We get 94 and 2 tenths. We know that the volume is approximately 94 and 2 tenths centimeter cubed. Now, remember to cube the answer with that little 3 exponent, otherwise it's not correct. We can find the volume when the base area is given. It's telling us the base area is 12 and 56 hundredths. We can just multiply it to the height and then by one third. We get 50 and 24 hundredths. And again, we can just divide it by three instead of multiplying it by one third. And we get approximately 16 and 7 tenths inches cubed. We can find the volume when the diameter is given instead of the radius. The diameter is 2 times the radius, so we can divide the diameter by 2. If it's telling us the diameter is 4, well then we know the radius is 2. We can do volume is equal to 1 third pi times the diameter divided by 2 squared. That would be for the radius squared, and we multiply that by the height. If the diameter is 4, well, then the radius is 2, and we do 2 squared for r squared. Keep in mind that the radius is from the center of the base to one side, and the height goes from the base up to the vertex. It doesn't matter if our cone is facing this way. We still see the radius, and that's the height. And it doesn't matter if our cone is upside down. We still see the radius and the height. Be careful if you're using a calculator. Using 3.14 for the calculations will give us a different product than using the pi key, since the pi key uses more digits 
for pi than 3.14. If we did 9 times 3.14 for the radius, we would have approximately 28 and 26 hundredths. If we did 9 times pi by pushing the pi key, we would get approximately 28 and 27 hundredths. We're finished with part B. We're going to move on to the last part. We're going to do some real world problems here. We're going to find the volume of a volcano. Have a wonderful day and join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.